It's showtime, folks. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Next Reel Saturday Matinee, our weekly show where the Next Reel team gets together to talk about news, reviews, and new trailers, our weekly list of challenges, and and so much more. And Steve has a game, <gasps> I hear. Yes. I hope. I sure hope. Hi, Steve Sarmento. Top of the morning to you. There you go. There and you go. Tom, Tommy Handsome. Bottom of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I already, <laughs> already regret all of this. Oh, <laughs> goodness. It's the Saturday morning zoo. That's it, a all, bit. it became <laughs> Already became a bit. Uh, we are, we've got, I guess there is a lot of news this week. And I, you, I think you know what I'm most excited about. Gosh, don't I can't you boys? remember. If I had to guess, it was, it's probably like two syllables. Starts Four with letters. A, yeah, it starts with like a, 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 a U or a. A Q. Quibby really- Corner! It's Quibby Corner, Hooray! everybody. Quibby Corner. Quibby is back in the news just when I thought they were dead and gone forever. Roku unveils Roku Originals, their new brand, bringing bold, fresh entertainment to the Roku channel. And what are those Roku Originals? Quibby old <laughs> trash. <laughs> That is such a weird, like when Netflix back in the day, before they were actually making their own things, they'd be like, oh, yeah. it's a Netflix super show. We made this. And I'm like, no, you didn't. You, went you didn't to make a, anything. You went to a film festival. Same with Amazon <laughs> Prime. Like yeah. before yeah. any of these people made stuff, they grabbed it and said, mine. I did yeah, this. You're welcome. Exactly. So and they, they've never said they want to buy any of my stuff. So nope. I'm bitter. Yeah. The whole thing is that it, it they are, have rebranded uh, the Quibi stuff. And apparently they've made it widescreen. So it plays on TVs and it won't stop every 10 minutes. So they have <laughs> just improved the core Quibi concept with two very simple features. Uh, if you are a Roku user, you'll be able to watch all of those hit Quibi Things like the one about the hitchhiker and the thing about the Princess Bride being remade at home on people's phones. It's going to be great. And then apparently like $50 million worth of other content that no one knows yes. about. Right. This is yeah. de- <laughs> like they did the Quibi version of train coming at camera <laughs> and men leaving factory. <laughs> like they just yes. redid all the first films ever. But in a terrible aspect ratio. <laughs> you know, I, I actually, I, I, it is one of my great delights to be able to talk about Quibi. But I do want to say, in all sincerity, I'm really glad more people will be able to see something that these creators made. True. Because uh, nobody saw them the first time. Right. And Roku has a hell of a platform. So more power to them for actually uh, repackaging these, thing, repackaging these things. Because I have a feeling <laughs> Roku got them for a song. <laughs> Uh, and yes. now we have, they have lots of new, fresh content. I, Steve? I, I don't understand Roku's model because I, I go to the store, I buy a Roku yep. and I drop whatever 20, 30 bucks where it's a Roku stick or whatever. I don't have to pay them anything. I don't have to pay them anything at all. So how, given That's not right. They, they, you have to, it's a subscription. Not for Roku. What? It, 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 Roku lets me access all my subscriptions in one place, but I don't have to pay them anything. And so I can understand them getting the Quibi content for a steal and tr- putting it on there. But this article also says they're going to be creating more new original Roku content. I don't know what their revenue stream is. I don't. Is it ad driven? Is it do they charge the apps, you know, a fee to be located on Roku. I don't understand how that works because <laughs> is everything just a Ponzi? <laughs> yes, exactly. I thought, I mean, I'm excited to looking at, uh, what was the one that, uh, Andy's daughter liked where they, they blast the food out of a cannon at your face and then you have to recreate that dish. Yes. I will watch that on my Roku. The but, explosive cooking show, the yes, shoot in the face with yes, food cooking show. Right, don't yeah. know what that's called, but it's but amazing. I'll find it on my Roku when it's there. But yeah, this puzzles me because at least I know that I'm paying, you know, Netflix and Hulu X amount of dollars per month and I get original content. But for Roku, I'm very curious to see what they come up with and what the quality is, given that I don't understand their revenue stream at all. I, it's very strange, but I, because I, I wonder if it, this, they're sort of bottom of the barrel service. So you don't pay Roku anything, but they make essentially their glorified affiliate marketer for all of the other channels. So they right. make, they make a VIG 
off of everything that <laughs> everything else that you buy. So you buy Amazon Prime Video through Roku, they make a, a bit off of that. And, you know, everything works at scale, right? Yeah. Haven't we learned this lesson before? Uh. Anyway, uh, yes, there are a lot of free things on Roku, but also that, I think, is how they make it. And Roku Originals are just a very cheap way to get into hundreds of hours of content for free that hopefully will get you to push buy on some of those other services. That's my understanding. But you know what free does, right? I mean, free just destroys your whole decision-making process. I don't know if you guys ever read yeah. any uh, Dan Ariely, Predictably Irrational, the whole yep. chocolate yep. experiment of you'll you'll take the free crappy chocolate versus the way discounted really good chocolate. So yeah, every time. Cause every time. Because it's lizards. free. Yes, exactly. So mm-hmm. yay, lizards, go enjoy your free Roku garbage. Yep, it's all about premium <laughs> subscriptions. Whoo! Thank goodness we solved that. Uh, anybody else excited for Jack Reacher? <laughs> so I tried to watch the first season, <laughs> and I got through like one and a Jack, half episodes. No, 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 Tom. No. Jack Reacher, not Jack, not Jack Ryan. You got your Jacks oh, all mixed up. You got all your Jacks askew. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, you mean Jack Reacher, the one where you like take off his head and you carve it out and you put a candle in the middle? That's Jack o' Lantern. <laughs> I'm oh. such an idiot. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, um, oh, Jack Reacher. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I liked the first one. The second one, directed by my old boss, was a disaster. But I like, I really like Christopher McQuarrie. I really like Tom Cruise. So depending on who's behind it, I'd be in. What? Neither of them. Oh, so, well, oh, doesn't it sound them. great? <laughs> oh, yes, because not I even thought, Tom Cruise. No, I think they took. Uh, for me, it was a great idea when they took a cue from the title of the second movie, Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. So never go back to that well for content, but apparently <laughs> they are. And so now Amazon Studios and Skydance Television and Paramount Television Studios are bringing us a TV series called Reacher. They're going to give us a whole season that's one book. That Pete's oh. probably read and can tell us all about. The you ins and are you are a real negative Nelly oh, on wow. all of this shots stuff, fired. and I remember it. No, it was no shots fired. Believe me, <laughs> Steve shot first, <gasps> always. Like on this. I was getting. <laughs> I don't know. Good job. That Is was that right? really for you. That was incredible. <laughs> it no. was probably wrong, but it was. <laughs> <a good laughs> I mean, it's, it's accurate. It's just not canon. That's all. right. Got I, it. I love. This that I really have a great time with the series. I think the character is super fun. It is it's pulp. It is pulp oh, yes. writing, and I have a good time. And then Steve posts some negative, like, "Oh my gosh, are these even words? This isn't <laughs> English. This is just symbols and lines and stro. It's a Kandinsky." And uh, I. Uh, and, and really, really <laughs> peed in my lemonade. And uh, so I, I really don't care for his opinion on Jack Reacher. I'll just talk to you, Tom, because Steve's negative. Steve, do you have anything else you'd like to say in your defense? May it please the court? This befuddling silence is staying in the show. I'll have you know. What a sad conversational character I am because a second ago I thought he was the guy from The Office. No, this is, this is Amazon Jack Reacher. Prime. A character was named because Lee Child's wife said, wow, you're really tall. You can reach things on, on tall shelves in the grocery store. That could be a job. You could just be a reacher and you reach tall things that are high up for people. And that's where the name of the character came from. It's ridiculous. The in the books? Series. Oh, you mean that's how the, the author thought of that's it? That's how that's how <laughs> the author named this character because his wife said that could be a job you could have. You could be a reacher. He's like Jack Reacher. Okay, got a character. Don't listen, let, don't let, me, let me write a book. Him, let me figure out what he's going to do. Also, it could have been uh, worse. It could have been like David Produce. <laughs> like if you're <laughs> Watson Samuel and Crick Bagger. DNA. Yeah, that was exactly. easy. Frank, okay, Frank self checkout. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> the uh, title character is going to be played by uh, Alan Richson. Is he who tall? Is in a bunch of he actually. I think yeah. he fits more of the. Isn't character that supposed profile. to be the big thing? Yeah, like, he's yes. a giant of a okay. man, and that's that's the whole thing. And so uh, apparently he's going to be. Do we've seen him in a, in some other stuff? He's been in the. He's Raphael in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies. He's also been in uh, the Hunger Games movie and uh, Treehouse Time Machine. That's a 
uh, mm-hmm. killer. He's actually he's he's been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, he is Hank Hall or Hawk in Titans. Uh, if you are following I any of the know. DC stuff, yeah, you don't. Really, who am I even talking to? Um, anyway, <laughs> me because you stopped talking to Steve Oil. Yeah, do you, exactly. do you, no, do you watch? This is what Purgatory is going to be he's, like. Steve. He's not the he's not the name. I mean, this is exclusive. Bruce yeah. McGill. Okay, that's a name. That's yeah, a right. face. Who's going to be our our villain? I'm assuming, right? Because that's what he does. He's like the corrupt mayor or something like that. Oh, I like so Bruce all, McGill. Yeah, always. no, he's great. I'll yeah. show up for him. Yeah, yeah, yep, that's him. Okay, well, except for he was, he was, it was he in, uh, he's in the the MacGyver uh, the reboot, right? He, Bruce McGill, and he wasn't a bad guy there. I don't think was he. I don't know. We don't. We don't know. Anyway, Amazon, <laughs> it's coming. It's going to be a new series on Amazon. Of course, it's going to be on Amazon. They're really cornering the market of uh, these Jay Vigilante characters. It's going to be awesome. Uh, that is weird so, to have Jake Ryan and Jack yeah. Reacher next to each other. I'm going to have too much wine and watch them abs- <laughs> accidentally like Just, one of one and the second of the other. And I'm like, this is Byzantine. <laughs> this is so hard to follow. This, this is like Game of Thrones <laughs> times five. I didn't even know who that person is. See, I'm, is I'm this a flashback? <laughs> I expect after a good five or six episodes, we'll then see that you can watch Jack Reacher over on Roku Originals. <laughs> but it'll be broken up into 10 minute segments. That's right. It's going to be great. Uh, I don't even want to talk about my next thing I'm excited about because you guys are. are <gasps> I've been yeah. nothing but confused. <laughs> <laughs> Leverage. Did you guys ever watch Leverage? Yeah, 20 Tim- years Timothy ago. Timothy Hutton. Yes. Is that Timothy Hutton? No. That was like yes. the con man show, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. They're all yeah. old now trying to cash in on it again, right? Oh, that's fine. They, well, except Timothy Hutton, except but Timothy they got Hutton. everybody back uh, for this for this series. Yeah. And I for the, it's a limited series. I think it's eight episodes uh, mm-hmm. coming back. And I am just very excited about it. I think it's it was I had a lot of fun. This was like the great sort of uh, laundry folding binge show. Oh, you yeah. know, it's like sure. it was it's exactly what I needed. And yes. uh, it, it's a very much the Robin Hood trope. And um I had a good time with it. And so they got everybody back. Um, yeah. I'm bringing up IMDb because there is. Because they couldn't names. get Timothy Hutton back. But they so you bring in Noah Wiley to fill out the cast. Exactly. That's who exactly. it was. Yes. Oh, that's I, fun. I don't know which I was more. I, I was more baffled by the fact that they were able to get Noah Wiley in here. Get Noah Wiley. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Or that they managed to keep Aldous Hodge. Yes. That was that yeah. I think is a coup. He's not a recur he's not a, a um what do they call it? A regular cast member. He's a mm. recurring cast member, so right. he's not gonna be in every episode. But um he he was the nerd in yeah. the other show. But now he's he's had a bit of a breakout, especially with One Night in Miami, um, which he was great in One Night in Miami. And uh, so they got him they got him back for this uh, limited series. I think it's gonna be really fun. Oh yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it because I agree. It, leverage was that it's like Burn Notice. It's one of those shows where it's like you could watch how yeah. many seasons of that, and it's like, yeah, there's something about these characters. There's so much about the structure that you, you're always in it for an, another season. Sure, bring it on. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Also, Jeffrey Donovan is oh. enormously charismatic. Yes, I'd watch him doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, ba- baking, <laughs> car- sharpening knives, easy. Not Coming to you on Roku two. Originals. <laughs> Not Blair Witch 2. Yeah. I'd watch Jeffrey Donovan in 10-minute segments. <laughs> um, and then we have a deleted scene from The Mitchells versus The Machines. I don't know anything about this, but Steve posted it. So this was one of the, I believe it was one of the animators posted this, and it's a scene near the end, and it's just, it's just basically the uh, storyboarding of that final confrontation. But what you can see from the artwork is, in their final confrontation with Pal, Pal is like embedded in a giant animated robot that's got a big Furby head. So somehow the Furbies from the mall, sort of that trope sort of continues along. So we've got sort of... That so the uh, yeah. the whole thing is you got to get you got to get pal out of that and you know basically the same thing happens ends up in a glass of water but it's a little bit different dynamic there and it was just it's interesting because very rarely do you get the deleted scenes from an animated <laughs> film because if it's been deleted they don't animate it I what is what is funny right now oh no I just because I don't know 
at all what you're talking about, and I haven't seen Mitchell and Machines, and so oh. it's like you're describing a dream or something. It like is, you're just it is a putting, very bizarre dream. You're putting so many crazy words together, and Pete's like, exactly <laughs> right. And I'm like, am I, yes. am I dead? <laughs> like, what's happening? No, you're all good. I I think uh, I think it was it was particularly funny. Do you think they cut it because Pal says? If you grab me through all this electricity, yeah. I'm going to kill you. And the next sequence is the main protagonist character, a teenage girl, oh, getting, getting, electrocuted. getting completely electrocuted. Maybe may have been a little bit too dark. It's, yes. it's a little bit gruesome. Yes. Uh, but hey, great job. But it's great. It's one of those I, what a, we, and Tom, yeah, you have yeah. to see this yes, movie. I honestly, I think it will. You will connect. with. What's it. one thing that will get me to watch it? Because I'm not, I always have trouble watching, unless it's love and robots, I have trouble watching um, animated stuff. Who made it? The, the Se- Lego. Uh, Lego. Oh, Lord Spider-verse. Miller? Spider-Verse. Yeah, Lord oh, Miller. Oh, so, Lord, Miller, uh, Lord Miller produced it. Lord right. Miller produced it. And they uh, they were referred to by the director as our rich uncle who got us anything we wanted. So <laughs> oh, that's there's great. that. That's, that's kind of what I needed was some like, trusted thing. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, great. I will. Yep. It's on Netflix, correct? Yes. So I know you guys, you did, you guys just did a you guys did a film board about it, and I didn't watch yes. it. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, you should watch it. Yeah. <laughs> was a, this was a good. This was a good bit. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> I'm a real person. <laughs> what is going on with Ryan Reynolds and and Rob McElhenney? I. <laughs> <laughs> what are, what are they doing? But I I don't know if th- this is unusual, and I don't know if it's riding the wave of Ted Lasso fandom, or if it's just two guys that love having a ridiculous amount of fun doing silly things. I I don't know. What are we talking about? Good question. Yes, we are, Steve. Well, okay. So apparently, one of the things that when you when you get lots of money, you invest in things, you buy things. So like Ryan Reynolds bought. Aviation Gin, and then I think held it for a couple of years and I think sold it off. Well, he and Rob McElhenney have bought the Wrexham Association Football Club. So they are owners of this football club. And when I say football, of course, I don't mean American football. I mean the yep. true football, right? So there's a basically a reality series of them over there being the owners of this football club. Which is know, it a is, bit or is it for real? It's no, it's it's, it's a, a series. series. Oh, that's it's an fun. actual On series FX. coming. Yes, I love it. I think that sounds great. Both of them are so personable and funny it's and great, super yes. funny. And I think the trailer for the bit is is good. Trailer for the series okay. is funny. Oh, like it, 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 is it is that is. usual thing where they're they are standing up talking to the camera and they have a Welsh translator and they are asked for the Welsh translator to translate what they're saying. And of course. The Welsh translator does not translate what they're saying. Welsh translator has all sorts of funny things to say. And then it yeah. cuts to the 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 season where you see how completely outmatched these guys are by football. Like, they, <laughs> yes. it, it really, I mean, it's like Ted Lasso. If Ted Lasso were actually an idiot. <laughs> yes. Right? Like, it, and I think that's the inherent dramatic and comedic conflict of the series. I think both of those guys are super funny. And oh, I, I hope people give it a little bit more uh credibility than oh it's a ted lasso copycat because right. sure it's in the space but i think it could be really funny and if there's one thing that we can use that i'd be fine having a little bit more in that space is the um what effervescence or the the style of ted lasso i yeah. like the idea yes. of the thing like nice comedy nice yes. comedy that still is really funny and has some edge and stuff but isn't based in sarcasm uh making right. fun of people it's like the opposite of like the league or all of those kind of things. Yeah. Cool. Shall we do trailers? Um, I think we should do trailers. <gasps> Let's do those first and then we'll do my thing. Okay. My trailer is Dear Evan Hansen. And I just want to get it out there right up front. It is the movie of the musical starring a Ben Platt who has not been digitally de-aged as far as I can tell. <laughs> He really no. pulls off the high school thing uh, with uh, Julianne Moore is in it as uh, or his mother. F- Julianne Moore, what? You may be asking. And I say, yes, that Julianne Moore. Caitlin Deaver is Zoe. Uh, and uh, it's Connor Murphy is played by Colton Ryan. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Um, no one's on your cast. 
Now we can both pretend we have friends. I'm sorry about my brother. Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? I wish everything was different. I wish I was part of something. I wish that anything I said mattered. Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah, yeah, that's mine. I'll, I'll, I'll just take it. Wait, I really, I need that back. You could fall and no one would hear. Connor took a letter from me and it was an assignment from my therapist. Ew. Even when the dark comes crashing through. Connor's mother and stepfather are here to see you. When you need a friend to carry you. Connor wanted you to have this. And when you're broken on the ground. Dear Evan Hansen, he wrote it to you. His last words. Connor took his own life. He won. I'm sorry Connor didn't write this. No, no, no. Please. It's this. You will be found. No, we didn't think Connor had any friends. Let that lonely feeling wash away Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay I didn't know that you were hurting Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand A lot of people feel like us You can reach, reach out your hand actually friends with them. I never meant to make it such a mess. I was trying to help. If you knew who I am, just how broken I am. I already know you. And I love you. It, I think it looks great. I'm a huge fan of the music and the story and the message. And I want to shout it from the rooftops uh, because I have to balance out Tom <laughs> and the killjoy energy that he brings to apparently everything I want to talk about today. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're talking about. I loved it. <laughs> okay. I saw a deer. I'm, I, I'm very excited to watch it again. Because I seem to be on the wrong side of history about Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> I saw it at the Amundsen, and all I will say is I thought it should be called, Oof, that was a close one, Evan Hansen, <laughs> because <laughs> a main character does something pretty terrible and then lies about it for a really long time. And then at the end, everyone's like, it's cool. <laughs> and I don't understand. The music is great and the people are lovely and all of that stuff. But I'm like, at one point, he literally is like, his... <laughs> His sorry is he plants a lie orchard. He, he offers an orchard <laughs> named after the lie that he made. And everyone's like, you're cool. <laughs> and I just never understood. I think I almost stood up in the Amundsen, which is the L.A. like downtown theater. And it was like, why are you all clapping? <laughs> this is how this is how wrong is made. <laughs> yes. Should it you be really what's... titled uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Evan Hansen? Is yeah. that what it should be? Yeah. It is very cringy. It's you very, know what's very tap cringy. tapping tapping on the glass? <laughs> Guilt, you <Yes>. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, the get music. it all out there. Yeah. Get it all out there, Tom. Yeah. Keep so it coming. It. I'm sure that's it. I'm sure the fans will have something. No, to say. I know because <laughs> I'm the only person. Well, no, me and actually fellow uh, TNR host Darnell Dash Darnell Smith felt yeah. the exact same way as me when we saw it. But we're the only ones, so I'm really excited to re see the movie. Uh, wonder why. There's this 40 year old pedophile hanging out <laughs> at a high school, and then, <laughs> and then pretending to be a student, and then I really want to see like what I missed uh, because I'm a huge his what's his name again? I'm a huge fan of his. I really ben like the Platt? the politician on Netflix that series. Yeah, I thought the yep. first season was outstanding. I haven't finished the second one yet, so yeah, I'll see. I'll see, I'll see, I'll see. Either way, I'm very excited to watch it, and I'm very excited they made it because musicals made by cool directors, and this is a very cool director because yeah, Percival, cool. Wall, Percival Wallflower, that mm -hmm. adaptation was outstanding. Yeah. Granted, he wrote, he wrote the book, but still. Yeah. Well, he also did the adaptation for Wonder, which uh, I don't know if oh, you've seen, seen that. that, that yet, but Plasio I love book. Jacob Tremblay. It was Jacob. wonderful. 
It is really? a regular, yeah, it's a regular watch around our place. We just watched it last week. My son picked it for his pick for movie night again. It, oh, it is just, it's delightful. He hasn't, I mean, he he wrote the screenplay for that. In terms of his direction, um, he directed Perks of Being a Wallflower, Four, uh, Wallflower, uh, Four Corners of Nowhere, also directed Wonder. I feel like I'm in good hands yeah. with this guy. Yes. You know? And the trailer oh. seemed good. The trailer didn't seem like overblown or anything. It seemed like yeah. it was in good hands. That's a nice way to yeah. say it. And a, I think, mean, Steve? a really talented cast because we we just talked about Amy Adams and Julianne Moore in a piece of garbage. But I, the scene that they had together <laughs> was really really good. And so I get, you had Ben Platt, you had Caitlin Deaver. I think you you know you've got a really good cast. You've got a talented director. I think yeah. this you know again. Being able to bring something on this stage that a lot of people haven't had the opportunity to get out to see, making it more accessible, great. You know, I know my daughter, uh, gosh, must have been her freshman or sophomore year, there was a, her school did a mental health awareness event. And so she was uh, sign, doing signing, you know, one of the songs from this. And so when I saw the trailer, I said, oh, Emma, look. And she's like, yeah, I really like that song, but the story's got some problems with oh. it. <laughs> so she's what right there with you, Tommy. <laughs> got exactly. It. But again, I think this is one that people should go to. And I, I think it will hopefully at least generate conversations around yeah. Im- important subjects. So. Okay. When can I see it, well, Pete? When I'm excited to it? tell you exactly when you can see it. It will be dropping September 24th. 2021 in the United States. It looks like it's a pretty big global uh, release, you know, for our uh, UK friends, yeah. October 22nd, uh, and Sweden, November 5th. Oh, that's so, sweet. There you go. I'm assuming in theaters. I'm assuming, yes. All right. Uh, yeah. Who's next? Who got it? Who got the trailer in next? Was that Stevie. you? Stevie. That's me. That's me. And I was digging around trying to find some things. And there was there were some interesting things. And then this came across my radar and I thought, this is interesting. We don't see these types of things this often because what I'm bringing isn't really one movie. It's three movies. Mm. This is Fear Street, which is coming to Netflix. And it is I'm, I've not read Fear Street novels. I'm not I'm a little bit old for the R.L. Stein crowd, so I was not a big goosebumps mm-hmm. person. But Fear Street, I guess they've they've taken that world and they've split it into three films as across many decades. So you've got Fear Street Part 1, which is in 1994. Then you've got Fear Street Part 2, which I think is like 1980-something. Mm-hmm. And, and then you've got Fear Street Part 3, which is in the diabolical year of 1666. Oh, yeah, but, sec- 78. 1978 was the second 78. year. Okay. We're all cursed. The witch is real. She put a curse on Shady Side. She's been possessing people, turning them into killers to take revenge on the town. Go, go, go. It happens to Shady Side over and over. Bad things happen here. You can't stop her. Your best chance is to run from this place. Hello? Hello? What I love about this is that it's we're getting a trilogy all at once. We've never seen this before, right? You know, Netflix is putting it all on the table with we're not going to just do one and then see what happens. We're committing to doing all three of these films. Uh, I what I like about it is that it's that right in that air er, that area of not so dark and scary and sinister that it creeps me out. And then you get if you lighten it up for kids like Goosebumps, it's like eh, it just becomes ridiculous and silly. This is that that like adolescent teenager zone, which is what the fear street books were, where we're going to hit into some dark stuff. It's going to get kind of creepy, but not so, so dark. And I just love this idea of bringing this to audiences because I'm not a huge horror fan, but this is something that I can get behind and I can enjoy. And I see Tommy's bouncing very excitedly as if he's got something to say. Uh, I don't, I'm actually watching Netflix. I don't know what you guys are talking about. (laughs) Um, no, but I'm, what I'm excited about, well, I guess I'm vicariously excited. I was also aged out of R.L. Stein. Yeah. By the time I was reading horror, I was reading Stephen King, like a, like a too young creep probably to do it, but I was doing that. Um, and so, uh, it was, I mean, I think the Goosebumps series, or I don't even know what Fear Street is, uh, was 
probably made for me. I was just born too early. Thanks, mom and dad. Yeah, way to go. They really sold you a bill of goods. Yeah, really. Yes. Not good. Um, and so uh, I like the idea of it. I like that there were some recognizable actors in it. There's one that I recognize from Stranger Things. And then yes. there are other people. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, I mean, I'll, I'll give it a try. Yeah, it seemed to have like a good, like you're sort of saying, Steve, like showing someone with a bag over their head, like twirl an axe. Yeah. That's that's the right amount. Like it doesn't have to be gore, but it has to be fear and threatened yes. and stuff. Yeah. And it seems like maybe, yeah, I don't know anything about it, but I, I love the idea of it and I'll give it a try, of course. There's there's some fun cuts, like when the when the you know, mass killer comes up and just you can tell they have a knife, but you don't actually see it, right? right. And then they stab it stabs the girl. Yeah. I, I actually I think it looks really um I, I think it looks really fun i i love that this is where the the time we are living in now where you, you this was probably pitched to netflix a couple of different ways yeah. uh right you can kind of see this maybe this was pitched as a six-part series hour a week kind of a thing and and this whole feature film trilogy uh it, you know coming throughout july i think is it's just a really fun alternative to to also make it feel like you've accomplished something as right. a viewer like oh yes. i saw the whole trilogy you yes. know really you just watched a tv show you know, three times. <laughs> is it interesting but, that it's, it's in fun. July and not October? Or are they like, this is sort of like, hey, movies at home. It's a, like, it's uh, a summer camp. Summer, summer camp, camp thriller. T- yeah. teens, are, teens are at Good home boy, during the summer. summer camp. Yeah. That's yes. right. Yep. That's right. I remember yeah. 1666. <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> yep. Summer camp in, <laughs> yep. in Boston in 1666. <laughs> yep. Everybody going to the burning? <laughs> It's a real treat. <laughs> real treat. <clears throat> All right. That's what that uh, looks great. So we, we already said that the it's throughout the month of July. It's the first three weeks of July. Yes. Right? You get this one week at a time. Yes. Second, yes. ninth, and sixteenth. Have a ball, everybody. Um Tommy. This is a documentary made by uh, one of my favorite filmmakers about something that I have no idea about. This is Vicarious, the documentary, because it's filled with Tons of people that I care very much about loving something that I've never heard about. It's called The Sparks Brothers. Throughout all the years that I've been making music, if you get on a tour bus with a bunch of musicians, eventually the conversation will go to Sparks. I remember just seeing them all the time, like, who are those guys? They are a band who you can look up on Wikipedia and know nothing. We are Sparks, dude. Please welcome Sparks. 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 Frequently asked questions about Sparks. How many albums are there? 25 albums. Are you brothers? We are brothers. How did you first meet? We are brothers. Music at its best. You hear it and you go, oh my God, what is that? It's insane, but it's fantastic. Each time you'd go to the rehearsal, there'd be something new there. Like, that's good. It wasn't like anything else. All pop music is rearranged sparks. That's the truth. The Sparks Brothers is apparently a band. I love the tag of this movie is that it's your favorite band's favorite band. This is apparently some group. They look like a mix between... Yellow and David Byrne and then a bunch of creeps, <laughs> but <laughs> they apparently were incredibly influential on tons of groups and the amount of talking heads that run through or are name checked in this documentary is crazy. And Edgar Wright can pretty much do no wrong. <laughs> Ironic. Um, and so I'm really thrilled to learn about something that I have no idea about. Steve, after I posted this in the trailer, you sent me a music video from the Sparks Brothers and it, it elicited no remembrances. You know, so I think oh I have gosh. completely missed. It sounds like the Sparks Brothers to come to a close is a band that I've never heard of and yet I've heard their influences legion throughout oh, everyone. That, yes. Pete, have you heard of the Sparks Brothers? Everyone's heard of the Sparks Brothers but me. No, no, I'm with you. And it's, oh. I, I'm watching this trailer and I'm thinking to myself, my goodness, they are, all of these popular people are telling me you're gonna, this is a band that you should love but have never heard of. Right. We've all heard of them. You're on the outside. And I'm thinking to myself, they're right. Yeah. I usually, I kind of like to think of myself as being sort of musically aware. 
I have never oh heard of gosh. these guys ever in a million years. Did you not watch your MTV in the early 80s? Yes. You did yes, not see this video because it's so I watched crazy. my MTV. I remember this because <laughs> there was that short clip in the trailer of Jane Weedland where he's, he's doing the magician trick. With yeah. the, I was yeah. like, oh, I remember that video. And I had to like dig around a little bit. I'm like, what's the name of the song? What's it? And then I, it's the song Cool Places from 1983. And I remember seeing this video all of the time because really? the Sparks brother with the mustache doing the weird moves and walking around that just, it's oh, did one you of say those 83. Yeah. 1983. <laughs> so that would have been five. See, I would have been eight. That's a little, it's just too uh, early for me. Oh, see, I'm an and old timer then. I don't okay. think that we, I didn't mean to age check no, no, you. No, I just no, mean no. like we wouldn't have had cable yet. My uh, family, okay. like we were late comers to a lot of this Got stuff. It. I, okay. I came in like, I think, <laughs> yeah, like I came in like I was around like 120 minutes, Nirvana, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. like all of that okay. stuff. A, a later, later, yeah, thing. Okay. yeah, yeah. No, this is so. What I didn't know is as I was digging through the some of their songs because uh, in the 80s, alternative music, uh, Susie and the Banshees had an album called Through the Looking Glass, which was all cover yes. songs, and they did a cover of a Spark song called This Town Isn't Big Enough for the Both of Us, which is. Sparks. I have that album. Yes, that's a oh, great neat. because because <laughs> because that Susie their version of the passenger is what ends the film I Tanya and it is like yeah, the perfect yeah. perfect right. needle drop. And so, yes, cuz is cuz I heard a clip of it in the trailer I was like that's where that song came from. It's again, yes, everybody was influenced by this band and nobody knows who they are. So, I am totally I'm looking for through their this, yeah. discography. What, yeah, they, when I they started wrote listening, "Happy Birthday." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> How is Patton Oswalt cooler than I am with music? That's what I want to <laughs> say. Yeah. He had a talking head in this trailer, and I'm thinking if Patton Oswalt knows him, yeah, yeah. then uh, I need to get caught up. So I'm really they're everywhere. By it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I and the trailer looks great, and Edgar Wright is awesome. Oh, he's so great. Uh, yeah, so great. Yeah. I can't wait. Because, yeah, when I saw this trailer, I looked at it, and it was like, two hours and 15 minutes. And I was like, ugh. And then it said, Edgar Wright. I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> like, I'm back on board. I'll do yeah. it. Uh, this will come out on June 18th, 2021. Uh, I remembered uh, to have the date ready. No one reminded me. This was all me. Uh, because <laughs> because uh, when the legend uh, yeah becomes true, print the legend. Okay, yeah, June 18th, 2021. <laughs> Is it is it available streaming or in theaters exclusively? No, no. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. Let's, let's, <laughs> the legend let's, holds true. We'll never know. It just says it says release date. Does that help? And I can tell you when Hot Fuzz came out. All right, Ian. <laughs> let's play a game. Tommy, you have a slight advantage in this game. Oh. You do because of the knife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly because of the yeah. knife. no, because you were present for our pre-show conversation before our discussion of the woman in the window. Okay, true. Do you remember? Oh, do you remember no. what we talked about? Nick Langdon no. brought Nick Langdon brought up the fact that there is one word that shows up a lot in some movies titles. That word is American. That's right. <gasps> so we are going to play a game called American or an American. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to name a movie that has the word what? American somewhere in the title. You tell me if it's only American or if it's American and un-American. So, for example, an un-American movie is a movie that has the exact same title without the word American in it. For example, if there was a movie titled American Hump Day, you would say American and un-American because there is also a film titled Hump Day. There is no word American in that title. Got it. I will give you a movie that has American in the title. You tell me if that's stands alone or if, if that also is the a, title or if you just added the word American. Oh, no, no. It's, it's going to be a real movie that has American in the title. So let you, me just say like. What? Uh, no, no, no. Hold, <laughs> on, hold on. Hold, hold on. I'm going to give you. I'll, I'll give you a movie that has American in the title. OK. 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 If you For were to, real. If you were to remove the word American from that title, you would have a is title. Is still a movie? Is that still a movie? Oh. Okay. Well, oh, okay. So, oh, and the buzzer is American or if, oh, wait. So what? you'd say American or you'd say American and un-American. And I will, Okay. you're not going to have to buzz in. Okay. And here's the other thing. Oh, I'm not, got it. 
I'm not going to got you on some small independent film that has like five ratings on the IMDb. You know, I'm, sure. look, I'm looking at films that, that have would a general theatrical release. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but you can't just play the odds and say American and un-American. You have to demonstrate your knowledge of the film. You can't just be like, yeah, I'm sure there's a film that's called that. So for in our example, you might say, yeah, uh, American and un-American, because I know Hump Day is that uh, mumblecore movie with that Mark guy that makes movies with his brother that are mumblecore. You don't have to tell me the whole plot, but just something to substantiate the fact that you know that that movie exists and be able to tell something about it. Okay. Okay. So, for example. Yeah. Pete, we'll let you go first here. We'll give you the first one. That's terrible. Okay. Okay. No, no. This is lobbing some softballs at you here. American Psycho. Oh, I get it. That's American and un-American. And why is it un-American? Because of... I, 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 <laughs> oh, I should have given that one to Tommy because he's got the knife right there. Yeah, he's got the knife. Yeah. <laughs> when in doubt, so, Steve, Tommy yeah. has the knife. <laughs> we go. Okay. It, and it's brilliant because the other American psycho also has the... That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. There's okay. just a lot it's of that. It's just instead of that screaming noise, it's <laughs> Huey Lewis. It's Huey Lewis. It's Huey Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, so Tommy, American hero. American and un-American. Because? I know that Hero is a movie. Is it Hero Chinese? It's a Chinese movie with Chinese people. Okay. (laughs) I don't remember what Hero is. An American Hero, is that a Tom Cruise movie? I you only have to tell I me about do, you. You only have to tell oh, me about the un-American one. Her, hero is, I know it. I want to say it's like Chow Yun Fat or something. Okay. Um, something okay. that's is enough. That, that's enough because okay. it, it was it was Jet Li, and that's the one. Jet, Jet Li. Oh, good. So Zhang, now I'm just racist. Now movie. I'm just lightly racist to perfect. Oh. <laughs> or there was the alternate other hero movie from 1992 with Dustin Hoffman and Gina Davis and Andy Garcia. All right. Wow. Oh, okay. Yes. So I get double points. Just gonna no, okay. You get one point. All right. Here <laughs> All right. we go. Pete. Amer- yes. American Pie. Oh. Oh, wait. Does, I, uh, is are we talking about homonyms or spelling? It's spelling. Got it. Is there really a movie <laughs> called Pie? I, I. It's not. I'm. It's not one that I could defend. So I'm going to say American. That is correct. Oh, good job. (sighs) All right. How was pie spelled in Aronofsky's pie? Was it P-I or was it like the symbol? Yes. It was this. Okay. Got it. I I think when it's. Yeah. yeah. Because you can't. You don't do a lot of searching. No. The other one. That's true. What key command is that for that symbol? All right. Right. Tommy. I'm ready. American me. American me, I know, is. Uh, EJO in prison with all of his glorious acne scars. <laughs> okay. uh, sorry, EJO is Edward James almost. Sorry, you know, we're pals. Me, 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 me. Gosh, it sounds <laughs> right, but I got <laughs> nothing. Is that the one where the family is in the woods? And they find that monkey purse. That's Harry and the Hendersons. Do you ever do that when you mix up me with Harry and the Hendersons? I'm just going to say American. And that is correct. Hooray! We did it. All right, Pete. So now, wait a minute. What? Like, I just had to start. There is a me with uh, Stephen Agee and Allison Burns. But is it a five-person dumb thing? By I mean, Jeffrey Levy. Is there, I don't know. I've never seen it. I know, but, but Steve sort it of does exist. I'm like, I'm sort like, of a caveat. I mean, yeah. I mean, if it's small indeed that didn't have wide release, I'm not going to gotcha. You're not going to go for that. No, it's okay. not a gotcha. Right, that's good. Be, that yeah. That saves yeah. me. Yeah. That's not a gotcha. Exactly. Because yeah. I, I'm I ready. can't expect that you've seen everything. I'm trying to ones that are yeah, no, and reasonably I haven't well seen known. everything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All, right. All right. So, Pete, you're going to get American Harry and the Hendersons. What if that was. American Maid, M A D E. Oh, American Maid. I believe that this is American and un American. And why is that? Prove it, smarty uh, pants. Maid is. <laughs> I, I, because I feel like it should. And I feel like <laughs> it also stars 
uh, what's his name from the casino movie from Casino? Uh, his and, and he's real mad all the time. And <laughs> I think I'm writing a movie yeah, about what's the uh, about the mob. It's a mafia movie, and I want it to exist so bad, but I can't. Can I say steal that. if I can say is what that a, Maine yeah, is? Steal? Yeah, sure. Go for it, Tom. Is that a thing? Pete, yeah, I didn't mean ahead. to cut you off. I just got excited about no, remaking the game. No, you can't. I know it exists because I can I can just, I can totally see it. And I yep. feel like I see it in their, there's like a limousine. And there's, yep. That's they're the driving cover. around. That's the cover okay, okay. of the movie what? is the no. two main characters okay. right. sitting in a limousine. Sitting in a limousine. Okay. Yes. All right. I will but give you that. But it's not, what's his name? It is John Favreau and Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. Yes. John Favreau yes. and Vince Vaughn. Yes. Correct. <laughs> yes. Oh, bite Two me. aspiring Co- boxers, lifelong uh, friends get involved in a money laundering scheme through a low level organized crime group. So you had yeah. Mafia, Thank you had you. the limo. I Okay. I know I you've feel seen like, it. Yes. I feel like Tom needs yeah. to get that point, but yeah, that was a, a major, major Cardiff assist. Giant. I actually yes. like that movie. It's Cardiff Giant is a big uh, thing back. And then that movie actually has some of the funniest bloopers that actually really show the behind the scenes thing. Because oh, there's yeah. tons of bloopers of Vince Vaughn sitting next to uh, John Favreau mm-hmm. and them messing up and how they deal with it. Of like uh, poking each other and stuff. Yeah. It's actually really fun. Yeah. I love it. I it's all it's like oh, coming back as a wash. Yeah. It's all washing over me. God, that's amazing. Okay. Pete, you got it. Memory memory is stupid. Good. Go ahead. Okay. Let's go with Tommy, American Sniper. Yes. Oh. Well, <laughs> what can I I mean? <laughs> they both involved guns. I know it's American on American. This is a possibility of a steal for Pete. American Sniper was America's sweetheart, Bradley Whitford. And that time that America was like, yeah, a war with no gray area. <laughs> like we made it. It was like a Christmas relief and we shot it to number one. And I was like, do I understand what America's going through right now? <laughs> because it was such a weird Clint Eastwood directed number one, like dinosaurs, <laughs> fake dinosaurs and snipers. OK, America, take a breath. But then Sniper was a movie. Um, <laughs> and it was right now? I want to say something like Tom Berenger or Sniper I can picture it it's not a great release <laughs> okay you're you're fine Tom Berenger and you, Billy you Zane you already got it, it like just Tom stop Berenger? talking Tom Berenger, it is Tom Berenger 1993 and Billy Zane Billy Zane yes P- you guys saw me on the video I clearly did not look anything up Oh, and no, I don't no. own Sniper. Okay. I can't wow. believe that. That's that was that an weird, amazing guess. Well, no, that's that weird memory thing. You yes, know what yeah. it is? Is Pete, just like you in the limousine, I pictured the cover. Yes, exactly. I'm yeah, such a DVD Tom, yeah. and yeah. VHS Yes, because you're walking through Blockbuster and you're like, yeah. should I get that Tom Berenger? Yeah, I think I'll go for this instead. Yeah. Yes. But also, <laughs> it was in the period where Tom Berenger was only playing this guy. Yes. Really? Like, right after he Platoon. He is the only one. Yes. Yeah, he's the only one who could ever play this guy. Yeah. And uh, huh. was it uh, JT Walsh was in it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I had JT this. On, I had the v- v- VHS, VHS of this okay. one in, in college. Here. All right. Wow. That was exciting. All right, Pete. Nice job. American yeah. Gangster. Oh, oh. American. You are correct, American. There are many international films, but nothing major that has come out called Gangster. That is an outstanding question, though, because yeah. I was like, oh, oh, oh. Oh. Like I was I... Got offended by how smart that question was because how is there not a movie called Gangster? All right. <laughs> I need. I need to tell you the basis of my, I think it was obvious. I love that. I said to myself, if I were in a pitch meeting and somebody said, the movie's called Gangster, I would say, try again. (laughs) Because that sounds stupid. And that is entirely what I based it on for that guess, right? It was a 100% guess. The movie's called Gangster, and you're like, oh, the reboot? And you're like, wait, what? (laughs) That's not, yeah. It's called Shazam. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. Um, All right. Oh, Tom, that's great. Tommy, okay, yeah. I'm you, ready. Your film is American Animals. <laughs> Uh-oh. Surely Discovery Channel has American done that. American Animals? Oh, no. 
Is there an option to be <laughs> nothing exists? Because I don't remember American Animals or a movie called Animals. American Animals is a film. It, uh, um, obviously. So yes. I have a, a, a one and two. American and anim- Okay, Animals. Animals. There was a movie called Babies. <laughs> was there like a Disney release? Because for a while, Disney got really excited about releasing things. And they'd be like, I don't know, otters. Like, Disney got, like, really lazy and just, like, cobbled together footage. Animals. Animals. I'm going to say, wait. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give something a try. Okay. okay? And you can let me know. <laughs> it's American Un-American because the movie Animals was based out of Britain. And it's a bunch of... British crime people doing things, ain't it? And they're like, "Oi, oh, you think you're gonna? You think you're gonna get that lot? Uh, that lot? You think you're gonna take that lot off of me like a bread, bread?" The end. <laughs> or it's about boxing. Or it's from South Africa. The end. <laughs> no. Damn it. Okay. So it's just American. It's just American. What's American animals? American Animals 2018, four young, men, four young men mistake their lives for a movie and attempt one of the most audacious heists in U.S. history. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> okay. 7.0. So this IMDb. is in the, in the spirit of, of not calling us out. I just had to search for animals and because I wanted to see what Discovery Channel had. And there is an independent tiny independent yeah, film sure. that now I really want to see. Oh, okay. <laughs> Best is friends Laura and Tyler. Animals? Fellow, it is directed by Sophie Hyde, but it stalls Alia Shawkat and oh, uh, okay. Holiday okay. Granger. Yes, yes. And uh, I saw and that. It, it had like a rate, had like eighty reviews or something like that. Or it's, it, it's yeah. 1,708 and okay. eight reviews, and it's a six point one. Okay. So it's over the six star. Yes, but, but it it actually looks kind of funny. Yes, and I oh, like yeah. her a lot. Oh so. yeah. Okay. Anyway, okay. What's next? Give me. Give it to me. Give it to me. All right, Pete. American <laughs> Renegades. Ooh, okay. another so I'm sitting good in a pitch one. meeting, and I say, and and he comes in and he says, "Oi, <laughs> we oh. got this movie called Renegades." Oh, I'm pitching it. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, you're pitching it. Yeah, and I say, uh, "Do I say go back to the drawing board, or would it be better if you just added American to it?" <laughs> I can renegades. Be, I it can sounds be, more like a video game. American, they're all renegades, aren't they? <laughs> a bit, a bit renegade-ish, isn't it? A bit. That's my different, terrible. Yeah, you're really. Broad, no, you're really British leaning thing. in. Yeah. Um, oh, a bit American, yay. Does it? What if you? And it's just renegade. It can't be like the renegades. No, it's. So that sounds like would, a TV show. It would just. That be, sounds like a really dumb TV no. show on the CW. Sounds like a great yeah. TV show. My dog's dead. Yeah. I'd watch that twice. Yeah. I'm going to say American. Oh, apparently you have forgotten the 1989 film starring Kiefer Sutherland and Lou Diamond Phillips about an <sighs> undercover cop that forms an alliance with a Native American to help him hunt down the criminals who stole an ancient Lakota tribal lance. Whoa! I have I have no what picture of the VHS movie? cover of that, oh. but you're right. It is now there. I get it. Oh my god! Wait, who was who was with Keanu Reeves? Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland. And Lou Diamond Phillips. And, and Lou Diamond Phillips. This was the like. Why did oh, I say Keanu Reeves? I don't know. But this <laughs> no, is the nobody knows. This was right around the uh, like Val Kilmer Thunderheart type oh, of thing. Like, oh, let's uh, do yes. another cop Native American yeah, movie. Yeah, we need cop Native American movies. Yep. Oh wow. Okay. Huh. Nope. You win this round, Steve. Wow. All right. So wait, right. we're even, Steven, yeah. so far. Pete, not should, <laughs> yeah. right? Yes. Okay. okay. We've got we'll everything wrong, but what? This is this is a this is the last one of this round, and then we've got the oh, final round, round. Okay. which gets right. things. But so this one is oh okay. So there's there's an opportunity here. So how does it work? Boy, because Pete went, so I got to give Tommy. Riddled I, with it's gotta go Tommy. I got yeah. I got to give Tommy one, and then I got yeah. this. Yeah. Okay, so Tommy, here yeah, we go. Yeah. Okay. All right. American Dreamer. American Dreamer. Oof. These are so good because they all seem like they're like, how have we not used these words yet? Dreamer. Come on, Tommy. I'm going to see if I can register dreamer.com. Dreamer.com. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's porn. <laughs> you forgot the D. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? That was a family friendly joke. Um, d- d- dreamer. I'm going to say. Man, American dreamer. I'm gonna say, 
I'm going to say American. Flat out, the end, done, and I won, and I got to go. Oh, wait, no. Pete. Pete, Pete has, oh, no. What's true? What just happened here is that Tom doesn't have children. <laughs> Yeah, true. Oh no, is it a kid's movie? <laughs> true. Uh, this is a film about uh, uh, Dakota Fanning uh, buys a horse and Kurt Russell's in it and yes. he's not de-aged digitally right. at all. Yes. Boy, is mm, that yeah. on, not on any radar. <laughs> nope. Like it's like, a, that's an, an nope. EMP it's went like off. A, yeah. <laughs> There's no it's radar a, even possible. It's a, uh, uh, it's like a rehabilitation right. movie. She, like the horse, horse is, is a broken leg yeah. and she's like, oh, we got to right. take care of the horse. And he uh, says, all and, right, I'll take care of the horse. Right, Let's that, go. Horse. That they actually yeah. like help themselves to. Yeah. 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 Like but you can't fix the horse. But you must tip the horse. Yeah, it's a big thing. Got it. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I'll take that lose. You'll take that lose and put it in my heart, burning <laughs> oh, with okay. anger. So then we'll go into the final round, and this is where I will describe the mashed-up plot of two movies. At least one of them has American in the title, and the two titles have one word in common. So, for example, and then you would have to give me the mashed-up title. For example, this example does not have the word American in it, but just to give you the idea, if I said huh. Jenna Rink makes a wish on her 13th birthday and wakes up the next day, a 30 year old woman who finds herself on a month long journey of provocative and hilarious assignments from an eccentric couples therapist, you would say 13 30 going, going on, on 30, 30 nights. nights, 13 going on 30 nights. Got it. OK, thank you. You are shout really out. Will Shortsing this today. <laughs> that That's was amazing. 30 nights available on Amazon Prime. <laughs> what? OK, there you go. Good looking at Steve. Okay. All right. So, Pete, you will get the first one here. Oh, my God. A teenage girl with nothing to lose joins a traveling magazine sales crew and gets shrunk to the size of an insect by a scientist. Two movies. One of them has American in the title. Can you do it one more time? Sure. A teenage girl with nothing to lose joins a traveling magazine sales crew and gets shrunk to the size of an insect by a scientist. Uh, wow. 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 <laughs> like, I don't have it. And then I have to add the word American to it. <laughs> yeah. I know it's I, not me, but it's pretty much American. I shrunk the kids. I don't know. Very I close. Know I, Very I, close. Uh, okay. What is the name of the second movie? Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Okay. American Honey, mm -hmm. I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> American Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. That's totally it. Yes. American, yes. oh my God. American Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. American yeah, Honey. That, I actually great. said it. And that's I great. didn't. Well, you dropped the American, honey. American, I, I dropped the honey. Oh, yes, it's American, exactly. I Shrunk the Kids. I get the it key. now. There okay. you go. Okay. That was right. Standing. Yeah. All right. Tommy. Wow. Wow. A this is sexually frustrated suburban father is doomed to suffer a midlife crisis unless he learns to fall in love with a beautiful young woman he keeps prisoner. Well, I know part of Ooh. it is. Um, oh, no, no, I was saying American Pie. That's not it. It's Amer. Wait, American B I Beauty. It. Do it again. A sexually frustrated suburban father is doomed to suffer American a midlife beauty. crisis unless he learns to fall in love with a beautiful young woman he keeps prisoner. Isn't it American Beauty? Isn't the name of that movie? The Kevin Spacey movie? He's not problematic. American. Oh, no. Is it not? Now I've said the word too much. <laughs> so, uh, that he keeps. I never prisoner. get anything right. I'm so excited. <laughs> but he says that he keeps prisoner. American. I think it's American Beauty. I'm going to go with that. Okay. So American. Wait, is it not American Beauty? <laughs> I don't think it's. Look, wait, look closer. <laughs> Look closer. <laughs> I'm going through the trailer. All right. Two Throws minutes later. The thing and it? the stuff. And it's, oh, you're so screwed, says the uh, lady in the drive through <laughs> And then I love this firing this gun. And then I think it's American Beauty. I'm going with that. So what? What? Why is there a prisoner beauty? Oh, the idiot. American Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> 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 that took me so long. You know why? Because I'm such a creep and I was trying to think of like a horror. When you said like a yeah. beautiful woman taken prisoner, yeah. I yeah. was like, American Beauty Hostel? <laughs> like, I'm so gross. American Beauty and the Beast. That is wonderful. Go. Good yes, work. That, oh, nothing man. wrong with either of those movies. Not creepy okay, at all. No. 
I'm all sorry right. that that took me so long. That's Feel free right. to edit me out of the entire podcast. That's oh, okay. no, no. That whole thing is staying in. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> That's Pete? wonderful. Here you go, Pete. Oh, God, okay. A, cu- a couple right. of high school grads spend one final night cruising the strip and get caught up in a rivalry for ownership of the Glam Slam nightclub. American Graffiti Bridge. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> One does not truck out an obscure Prince movie lightly. Wow. That was so... Steve Steve just introduced the game and you said (laughs) that's how quick that was. Holy cow. All right, Tommy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. All right. Last, last, Last one here. Okay. An original mix of fiction and reality illuminates the life of a comic book artist girl whose love for a handsome young man from the town's most powerful family slowly drives her to heartbreak and madness. Girls, an American girls, comic book girls. Girls, yeah. Comic book girls love. Mm -hmm. I will offer it up to Pete for the steal because... Any I can't idea? keep all of that quite in my head. If, and I, for the podcast, I don't want you to keep repeating the same words over and over again. Right. I, I think Comic this this is an obscure get. If it, I have it, it right, I it, it is American Splendor in the Grass. That is correct. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> I am, A, I'm so glad I pulled it because that was never going to be a possibility. And B, Pete, you're a smarty. And C, Steve. You are a diabolical genius. <laughs> well, I figured if you, I didn't know if getting yeah. the word, if you got American Splendor, if that you have word to love American Splendor. Splendor. Like yeah. if you, if yeah. you, that's the Paul can, Giamatti you try, movie, right? Yeah, yes. Paul Giamatti. Yeah. And yes. I, I really love that movie. The only other movie I could think of that has Splendor in it is Splendor in the Grass. Mm-hmm. Like that was yeah. not a genius get at all. No. Like I, I can't even, was that, that was Natalie Wood? Yeah, like, and, I and Warren seen Beatty. That. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that in probably 30 years. Right. Like that's And I haven't yeah. seen that in my life. And so I was always going to be in trouble. I had American Splendor and it was fighting with Ghost World, which isn't true. Yes. That's just yeah. about a girl that's also in a comic book graphic yeah. novel. Yes, yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Well okay. played. Wow, no, what a game. There you go. Steve. Well, Steve this is you're going to have to bring that back again I, that was I don't fun. know that I can. There's there I mean I got to do a lot more research into American films, but again, this is hats off to Nick Langdon for bringing up the fact that Americans love to put the word American in their movie titles even when they don't need it to be they there. They sure right. do. And then we made the joke uh, about what if then you just had the American taken out and it was just hustle and pie. <laughs> Renegade. <and> in Paris. <laughs> Me. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Oh, well, that was really fun. Oh, and that yeah, leads us that leads us uh, directly into this week's list. Oh dear. What do we have? We are doing uh, the movie Hump Day. Uh, how do you feel about Hump Day? Have you guys seen Hump Day? No. no. Nope. Hump Day is a movie in which two bros do their best to out vulnerability each other. Uh, and they somehow talk themselves into making a sex tape in which they have sex with one another for an independent porn festival, which does exist. The Hump Porn Festival in Seattle. And uh, you can enter it yourself if you like. Make yourself an independent porn. And they go through that process. And so we uh, talked about uh, several topics that you could um, that you could go for building this week's list. One was making bad decisions while drunk or high. Uh, that didn't get picked. One was mainstream movie titles that sound like porn. I thought that was a lock. I, I voted absolutely for that one, uh, and what came out of it was Schindler's romances. Oh, <laughs> I, that was just off the dome. Um, <laughs> romances is the topic for the week, and uh, so romances. that's where we land. Three movies that are good bromances. I'm curious uh, from you both, how did you approach this week's list? What did you do? I'm not exactly how sure did you... how to, like, we didn't really define it. Right. It's, it's yeah, so how did, you, how did you define it? I'm curious. I did it with two male, at least two male characters that nothing works without them in it. Oh. Mm -hmm. That it's so, that they are so close and so important to the entire story that without one of them, 
uh, the entire story would completely fall apart, almost like they were in love or a, I don't know, bromance. Bromance? bromance. Would it be a bromance? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's- okay. I actually think that's a really good one. And that, that fits how I approached it. Steve, what did yeah, you, did you do anything unique? It's, yeah, I was looking at, yeah, you know, where do we have two guys in a film where the relationship isn't just like their partners, you know, like buddy cop movie type of thing, but there's got to be, there's something a little bit stronger of a connection between them or something that develops in that relationship. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I think the, the, that their relationship is key yeah. to their transformation as yeah. characters. Right. That, that I think is, is one for me. That, Agreed. Yeah. All right. And I adjourned. Guess I, oh no, we're still going to this. <laughs> okay. That's right. <laughs> I guess I go first <clears throat> and, uh, mine is, uh, it, it's one I, I just watched fairly recently. Um, and I thought that the relationships between, these guys you're not allowed uh, to say hump day you know <laughs> <laughs> you literally just watched that for the film <laughs> uh, i will not uh, okay. say a uh, hump day i the i found that the relationship between these guys uh it was really special and i think it was uh well written well directed it is a fictionalized account of a non-fiction uh happening it is one night in miami uh, oh, I, speaking yes. of Aldous Hodge, yeah. he's on the brain. Yeah. I think these guys sitting in a hotel room together talking about, you know, Sam Cooke and Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. I, I think the uh, I, I think it was just all around a great film. And I learned something about myself by way of the relationship between these men. And I, I think it was a really special uh, treatment. So one night in Miami on Amazon Prime right now. Check it Love out. It. If you haven't watched it. Excellent. It's a great movie. Uh, who's next? That's me. Steven. Yep. Pete. Tommy? Uh Oh, Oh, no. I don't want you to be the guy in the PG-13 movie that everybody's really hoping makes it happen. I want you to be like the guy in the rated R movie, you know, the guy you're not sure whether you like or not yet. That's right. American Swingers. (laughs) (laughs) From the producers that gave us American Made. (laughs) Yeah. So this is just one that the, the time in my life when I saw this, it's just a a uh, preeminently quotable movie, just one of my favorites about, you know, guys trying to find girls. But I think just the relation between, you know, John Favreau and, and Vince Vaughn in this is just this movie doesn't exist without without those two guys. Love it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great pick. And that movie was a really that movie reminded me more when it came out of my relationship with my friends. Not that, that we were that cool or going out to like that nightclubs and stuff, but like took the time to also show like sitting around and playing video games, yes. like doing yeah. stuff, uh, playing like uh, golf in like a three par golf thing. And like remembering <laughs> how many stuff they really captured this weird light, in a, lightning in a bottle that was always there. Right. For people yeah. at that right. age in a really great way. That's cool. Good choice. Yeah. That's a great choice. Uh, Tommy, that's you now. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's me. All right. So mine is about uh, two male friends. One is maybe uh, having trouble finding himself a little bit and his way in the world. And through a more, let's say, charismatic or understanding person is able to bring that person into the light, bring him into fruition, and really make him the person that he is. Of course, the one trip is that one of them doesn't actually exist. Is it Fight Club? It's Fight Club! Of course, okay. Correct! <laughs> it's like, okay. I hope it's Fight Club? I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I know. I, I thought or, we were or, still or, playing a game, so oh, I didn't I mean you to were like... Just, you were just pitching your next project to us, and we were yeah. like... Yeah. American Fight Club. Yeah. <laughs> but the other one is... His mother. <laughs> Hear me out. Uh, no, it's yeah, it's Fight Club uh, that Tyler Durden really brings out the unnamed, yeah, yes. uh, narrator of the film, which is Edward Norton. And even though all of the stuff comes from within himself, the end bromance. That is yes. a dark bromance. Yep. Nicely done. Uh, my next one was a complete 
complete surprise to me. It's another group romance. Uh, I did not take this movie seriously. I saw the trailer and I thought this movie is going to be bonkers fun to watch once. And it will have no rewatch value, but it's going to be fun to think about. And then I got to the end of this movie and they're in the hospital and I am weeping over the over not being closer to like in physical proximity to my closest male friends in my life. And I could not believe the mm. impact that this movie had on me. Steve, what is it? It's tag. It is Tag, 100%. Oh, tag. Yes. I love that. I love yes. that tag movie. Tag is outstanding. Yes. It is outstanding. It is very and underrated. I, absolutely. Yeah. And the, the by the end of the movie, I watched this movie and I watched these guys and that it was based on a, a real group of guys yeah. that played Tag together for 30 years and use that as an excuse to bring them closer together. That whole speech at the end to Jeremy Renner, like, you, oh, you always yeah. win, but you're never, never with, with us. us. Like. Right. So brilliant. It was just a, it's a brilliant pitch perfect comedy uh, tag. Absolutely. Good choice. Yes. That's my number two. And you get Who's extra next? points because it's a bunch of bros. <laughs> it's so bro y. Yeah. It is okay, bro y. Steve. So speaking of, you know, you think about the, the friends you have and, and all of that. Uh, this is a film I have not seen it in a long, long time, but it's one that when you, you, dig into the story and it's it's from another era but it's really about guys that are sort of on the fringe of society and they the only way they can survive is they've got to have each other's back they've got to be there for for each other uh, and you know you've got to have words of wisdom you know when when one is on his deathbed the only thing he can tell his friend is to stay, stay gold, gold. <laughs> pony boy yeah yes, exactly <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. That's right. That film is. Oh, it's got everybody. Is it on your shelf? Moulin Rouge. Have you said the name of the film yet? <laughs> the Outsiders? Oh, you did say The Outsiders? He I didn't is. hear you. No, he didn't. It's, he didn't. The, it's the film that shall not be named. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> yes. Nobody needs to say The Outsiders. Yeah. But it's The everybody Outsiders. Knows. Yes. Stay gold, Pony Boy. That's uh, right. Yeah. So good. All right. Tom, what's your third? What's your second? My second one is there's this guy, um, and he's sort of caught in within himself. He's caught in his own head and stuff, and he's having trouble being his own self. And then, um, you know, he meets someone who's maybe more charismatic or is more sort of, you know, out there, and, and he really helps him become the person he wants to be. <laughs> and of course, the one trap is that one of only one of them exists. <laughs> See what I'm doing is here? This, I do see what you're doing yeah. here. Is this uh is this a, a Nicolas Cage movie? It is not. That's interesting. Wow. It is okay. not a Nicolas Cage movie. What would that have been? Adaptation. Oh, <laughs> yes. oh, you were, oh, oh you were broing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, did right. he? Yeah, yes. he really well, yeah. this well, is someone that yeah. literally doesn't His exist. Twins. Okay. Uh, but um, but really helps this person become the person that he wants to be. Unfortunately, that person isn't the person he should be because he really doesn't fit into society until the end when a bunch of people give him pens. <laughs> Do you want to make this a game or should we just say it? Not anymore. Actually, there's actually there's another person. It's two different bros. Bros is a two different males in his life that don't exist that take him down a kind of harrowing path as he learns Damn. more and more about the conspiracies that you can find in everyday newspapers. There's also a little girl that doesn't exist. And the big clue for that is she runs through a field of birds and none of the birds move. <laughs> a beautiful mind. Oh, oh. Uh. A beautiful wow. mind, Russell Crowe, oh, yeah. and uh, what's his name? Vision doesn't yes. exist. Yeah, Paul and Bettany. Ed Harris yeah. Paul doesn't Bettany. exist. Right, but these are two people that make him the person that he wants to be, someone important and interesting. And I thought that was really fun. And neither of you, looking at both of your faces, no one enjoyed that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Not, I just haven't seen it's it. It's been a in long so time. Long. Yeah. Oh, really? I, for a minute, I thought it was. I thought it was uh, what Robin Williams, uh, the death movie. I thought birds of the paintings walk oh, through the, all the yeah, painting yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What dreams may what come. Dreams come. Yeah. Oh, well, I, maybe I guess. I shouldn't watch no that every idea. night before yeah. I go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thought it was fun. Go ahead. <laughs> wow. That was that was great. Um, okay. So 
My third movie is another one that I feel like I am an island when I talk about how much I love this movie. Uh, is it the it, island? It's really oh, wow. <laughs> is the island. Yeah. No, it's oh. not the island. All right. uh, it is a movie that, uh, you know, I've already mentioned, uh, you know, the connections that I've had. I've mentioned Aldous Hodge when mm-hmm. I was talking about, uh, you know, leverage. And I bring us to One Night in Miami. I We talked about this actor during the game and now I bring you a movie, two bros who go on a trip together to do a little wine tasting. Oh, fine. And oh, yeah. they get in all sorts of, of uh, shenanigans. I'm talking about Alexander Payne's Sideways, 2004. Paul Giamatti and Thomas yeah. Hayden Church, Virginia Madsen, Sandra O. Oh. I love this movie, and nobody loves this movie. <gasps> I Wait, talk everyone to, loves this movie. No. No, I, I talk to people and they say, they say, oh, that movie's totally overrated. No. I, 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 Steve, it sounds like, is one uh, of no, those no, people. No, 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 Maybe no. there are numbers. Say, I wouldn't say it's overrated. There was something about it that made me very angry. And I don't know, I because I only saw it once and there was something, and I, I don't know what it is, but it's something about one of the characters. And I don't know, is one of the characters a writer or something? Yeah, Paul, Paul Giamatti. Okay, there's something about something, his his point of view about something just really rubbed me the wrong way. And I don't know what it was. And I just. Merlot? No, no. It was something <laughs> about writing and creativity or something that just, I don't know. I, I can't put my finger on well, it. Well, you're holding an awfully serious grudge yeah. for not being able yes, to know what I just it was. No, it just upset me. And I was like, I do not like the <laughs> point of view that this is taking. So, whatever. I don't know what it was, but no. I didn't like it and I don't <laughs> like it now. Right. <laughs> well, I had a great time oh, with that movie. And I yeah. think Sandra Oh and Virginia Madsen oh, no, it's, are yeah. wonderful. Yes. And uh, but it was uh, it was lovely. Yeah. So, sideways, throwing it up yes. in wine country. Throwing yeah. it up in wine country. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Steve, what's next? Is there anything I can really slam of yours? Oh yeah, go ahead and try and slam this one. Let's try it. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead. Ready? I never had any friends later on like the ones I had when I was 12. Oh, shoot. Jesus. Does anyone? Hey, my best friend got stabbed at a bar and then he faded out. <laughs> that was the original line. God, I love that movie. I'm always yes. due to rewatch that movie. Because that's, yeah, that's the bond yeah. that, dudes make when they're that age yeah yep go ahead pete bring it go ahead bring the hate yeah you can't eh, overrated <laughs> overrated there's too much smoking um let's see what else there's, there, there's too many moons and goochers yes oh, yeah god <laughs> we're talking so about many. stand by me of stand course. by me yeah no i don't like movies adapted from books um, there you go. okay are you just trying to find things that you don't yeah like? i got nothing yeah. i got nothing i love that movie oh, oh that movie stupid. Is dynamite i know <laughs> hey, okay. great list though. Look at what we did. Wait, we actually Tommy's made... got one more. What? Tommy's oh, got he does? one more. Yeah. yeah my, my last. Oh, do we care? My... It's, we know it's going to be American Beauty. <laughs> Go ahead. Imaginary friend. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right. This is a film called Chop Liver and it stars me. <laughs> How dare you? I'm a person. It actually, would... I would have been fine if we moved on because none of the rest of mine are very good. <laughs> but I'll do it really quick. Um, hey, this is a movie where they both exist and it's great. It's called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. I love because oh. I feel like emotionally, it's it's as close to a love story as we get really in that movie. Yeah. Cause you never see um, Leonardo DiCaprio and his wife that he meets in Spain, any kind of, no. I think by design, any kind of interaction with them at all. It's really this wonderful, not even codependent, just this lovely, Hey, I know you've had a tough time. Can I come over and watch something with you? It's, it reminds me of like what, like Mel Brooks and the late, great other person, uh, Carl <laughs> Franklin, Reiner? Carl, Reiner. Reiner. Carl Franklin Reiner. Yes. Uh, yeah. Carly Frank Rhine, uh, to his friends <laughs> would be like, um, yeah. And so I thought that that's a really beautiful, uh, male bromance that has been, yes. uh, put just lately, there's nothing in their uh, thing that is anything about like trying to up one over the other. There's no masculinity. It's just like pure caring without being oversensitive. And I loved it. Yes. Yeah, that's a great pick. I'm a great podcaster. <laughs> well done. Now I can say, look at this this list. This is a list of great movies, especially yes. mine. And uh, <laughs> I, I think I feel confident that you could go and explore these movies and enjoy some not like I, I'm really pleased that we didn't all end up with like, oh, Wedding Crashers. 
You know what I mean? Like, I really funny tried movie. to stay away from yeah. like yeah. bro in bro. Yeah, totally. Very, I think the, totally. Totally. I, I feel like yep. tag was the yep. as broy as I yeah. wanted to get because of that final hospital scene. But that was, I think, the rest of. I, I think this is a great list that that challenges the bro the bro code. Correct. <laughs> yes. Stupid. I don't know what I'm talking about. This was delightful. Now we get to pick what we're talking about for next week. Oh, right. We are we are talking about uh, our, number two in our Lynn Shelton series, Your Sister's Sister. Mm. I hope if you watch this movie, you don't get caught up in trying to count how many people should be referenced in Your Sister's Sister and note that there aren't enough of them in the movie to account for the title. Because that's enormously distracting oh, to me. But your the movie is okay. what it is. It is a movie about a guy who is, has lost his brother a year ago, and he's still having trouble going through the grieving process. And so he is invited by his good friend, Emily Blunt, to go stay at her family cabin on Orcas Island in the San Juans. And so he does that. But who's there? <gasps> Emily Blunt's sister is already there. <gasps> She's there, and they have they meet, and, it's, Wait, the uh, and then Emily sister? Blunt shows up. Yes, the sister's the sister. Just the sister. Oh, I would like to suggest titles that don't quite work or that don't <laughs> quite make sense. <laughs> titles that don't make sense. Let me just say, in defense of the movie, oh. it's a play. He says, I'd like to toast your sister's sister, meaning you, as a reflective. Oh, got it. Oh. Right. And it's, yeah. it's a play on words. Yeah. If you're like me and you can't let go of the fact that there should be your sister's sister, a third yeah. person in right. that equation, then it's really distracting. But uh, whatever it is, I think that would be an enormously difficult uh, challenge to okay. build that list. And so everybody would pick it. That's the truth. Uh, <laughs> we do have, uh, it, this is a little bit spoilery, going to bed with your best friend's sibling is a, uh, is a play on what's going on in that mm -hmm. movie. Um, uh, best friends who actually love Going each other. Going to bed with your best friend sibling. I love how like G rated we get sometimes. <laughs> You're already bleeping After out like three titles words. that sound like porno. Yeah. <laughs> Going to bed, <laughs> having the having the devil's sleep. Okay. Uh, going to bed with your best friend sibling. Okay. Go ahead. And uh, finally, uh, best friends who actually love each other. I think that actually has legs. I, yeah. I think lots of, of movies of, un, uh, of well, that's uh, unrequited an enormous or, amount. Yeah, yeah it's, sure. it's all the all the movies. Yeah, and uh, bad decision sex. I'm is fine another with that. one that's uh, that's another one. Uh, <laughs> you use the word sex <laughs> in the third bullet point, and then you said going to bed with it. <laughs> because bad decision going to bed is a really awkward grammatic construction. There, you know yeah. what's you know what's funny uh, is that in the movie. There is a scene where they just they go to bed together to bed. and they go to bed okay. and sure. actually they sleep inverted so okay. foot to head. It's uh, yeah, yeah you don't ever see top to anything toes. that goes on there. It's top, yeah. top, <laughs> top to toes. That's what they that's what they call it in Britain. I know that yeah. because of film. Uh, okay, okay, so what what have we decided? So, so what far? do you think? Do you do you think there's uh, anything yeah. else? Oh, and also it takes place in lovely the lovely San Juan Islands in uh, out off of the coast of Seattle, and it is a beautiful location. Uh, I think there could be something that to be said about locations. What about because it's kind of iconic titles that have the same word twice, twice. <laughs> oh, actually, I like yeah. that. Really? Yes. Yeah. The same word used twice in the title. Okay. Yes. I'm always trying to defeat the next yeah. set. No, that team. was good. So that's, I think it's going to be me, actually. So oh, I I'm sorry. You. I regret you already. Yeah. It's going to be great. Best friends who actually love each other, I'm okay with. It's just that that's, that really is most uh, rom coms by definition. Right. And so, if, yeah. and so the challenge is to come up with the best ones right. that's or fun. your favorites. Yeah. So I that's mean, fine. That's, so, you know. best examples of best friends who actually love each other or something if we can push you know people. what it could be your best best friends <laughs> oh you mean we love each other oh, so everyone has to bring like a personal story <laughs> about their friend group and be like let me tell you about deborah <laughs> no, it's just no. I mean, yeah. it's your best best friends who love each other movies. Yeah. It's Perfect. a play, Tom. Yeah, on I love sister, it. sister, sister. Yes. I love best, it. Best. Yes. Oh my goodness, I love it. I have a nut. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I love it. Okay, so Steve, and, I came up with and one. the third one. Yeah. Steve, what do you think? What's your What's your big choice? We've got titles with the same word twice. Your best best friends who love each other movie. 
And then bad decision sex. I don't like bad decision sex. No. Oh, uh, what about uh, number one sibling rivalry? Sibling uh, remaking. Mm. Uh, there's well, also- so that is, I mean, it's a it's a sibling love triangle. It turns out, like one sister has had sex with him, and the other one actually loves him. Um, Awkward love triangles. Awkward love triangle. There, Awkward there, love yeah, triangles. You know what? I could actually go with that. There we go. Yeah. Man, I'm good at this. Yeah, Tom, you just nailed it. All of them. There you go. Are we yeah. still thinking about and renaming you haven't even this? Seen the movie, uh, the Tom Real film podcast. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> just kidding. I'm not. I'm barely holding on. Okay. That was uh, super fun. Look what we just did. We came up with a great list of bromances, and now we have uh, a great list of topics for next week's hosts. Who are next week's hosts? I think at this point, uh, there's a very good chance it's going to be Mandy and Ocean and me. Oh, and so fun that group. ought to be great. I am jealous uh, and about that. So, group. do you want to vote in next week's challenge? I mean, you guys already can, yes. but if you're listening to this, you want to jump in and vote, you should. You just need to head over to the Show Talk channel in the Next Real Discord community, and you can lend your vote to the chaos that is list picking and movie sabotage each week. How do you get access to the show channel, you ask? I did. I know you're asking. I just did. How, all you have to do, all you have to do is head over to thenextreel.com slash membership and become a supporter of the Next Real family of podcasts. For just a buck a month, you can become a one reeler, join that community, head over to Discord, see all the, the great channels that the one reelers get for a few dollars more. You can become a two reeler and join us for show live streams like this one. Get early access to the shows every single week in your very own personal podcast feed and access to all the super secret member Discord channels. That's right. Members get a slew of episodes that only they can hear. Plus, you can now support us with a single annual donation at either level. This month's uh, bonus episode, we just did the big, not the big sleep, because that's all I can think of. It's actually the big heat. Ooh, the big yeah. heat, which was a fantastic, fantastic Fritz Lang joint. Uh, that's only available for members. It's going to be dropping uh, next week. So very fun. Last Letterboxd. We all use Letterboxd, except Tom. He doesn't use Letterboxd, but he knows what it is. What's the internet? Uh, we use Letterboxd to keep track of our movies, and uh, we're all uh, pro or patron members. If you want to be a pro or patron member, we've got the hookup. Uh, there is a uh, code. You just uh, All you have to do, really, is just go to the nextreel.com slash Letterboxd, and uh, right there, the code is already applied. It'll give you a 20% discount off of pro or patron membership. You can uh, join us, get lots of great perks on your Letterboxd account, 20% off, and it also works for renewals. That's it. That's all I got. You guys, what a good show. Epic mammoth show that you have saddled me with editing. I think it was too good. <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> Goodbye. Great fun. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, live stream. Steve Sarmento, Tommy Metz the third. I'm Pete Wright. See you next week. Hondo.